Hello everyone, this is Diego Saldivar, a Neurogames designer, and I am here with a bit of an update about the Neurosity Crown and Unreal Engine 5. So let's see what I came up with this month. So as you may remember from previous installments, I have been using the Neurosity Crown in order to um, come up with a Neuro game of sorts. Now that came with a bit of a hurdle for Unreal Engine 5, since there's no native support or Neurosity SDK for it. So I am dependent on a GetNemo's Node.js plugin in order to be able to connect with the Neurosity Cloud into the Unreal Engine 5. Uh, however, there's a bit of an issue there. Apparently there's a bug when exporting to Windows and it can only export to Windows. It doesn't support iOS or Android or Linux, anything else. So, okay, I can use it in the engine. Shout out to Bastian Kubarek, who has been checking out my previous code, as well as thinking about creating a Neurosity SDK. Um, kudos if you can, man. And if you can, please give me a shout out. And I would like to try to adapt my next code to your SDK. As for myself, I have been keeping myself busy uh, using the code I used last time for the minimum viable product, the web app, if you remember, and adapting that to a uh, Neurogames template. So this template is somewhat quick and dirty, so to speak. Um, there's many things that may not be super clean, but I tried to clean up the code and comment it as much as I can so that people understand what's going on, especially because the Node.js plugin doesn't quite stop when a blueprint is destroyed uh, when switching levels. So you have to explicitly shut it down before moving a level. More about that in the code itself, in the blueprints. And if you want to know exactly which ones, you can go to my GitHub. And I do believe that I tell exactly where to find the important stuff in the where's the important stuff section. For instance, the Neurosity Interfacer, which is basically the Neurosity app with a few lines of code extra, and uh, where you can find examples where I tell you how to shut off the script and then turn it on again, or wait until it's turned on. So if you would like to download this template, you can go to the link in the description below. So as you can see, here I have a bit of a template so that anyone can just use it and make their own neuro games. So the important thing for me here is the device settings where you can, just like last time, log in with your uh, password and your email. You wait a few seconds. Sometimes the device takes a few seconds to get to be scanned. If you have more than one, you may be able to select it. Otherwise, it will be automatically logged in. You can switch devices if you so prefer. And uh, you can remember this information, which will be saved in a .sav file um, for the upcoming session, if you quit and you start again. I also thought it would be nice to have some sort of Wii-like heads up to tell the user, hey, you know what? You should be putting your crown in the correct position because apparently it's one of the problems most people have uh, positioning the crown correctly. So yeah, I, I think this should be good enough, right? I basically took the graphic from the instructions booklet in the manual. Then if you want to start the game, you may start loading screen. And then there we go. There's our information, our concentration, well, focus and calmness. Of course, the battery is right there. If I turn this off, it will be taken off. And if I start charging, the battery here will say, oh, you're charging, so we're sleeping. Now, um, I wanted to showcase very quickly inside the game that actors can be affected by the uh, by the crown. So here you can see that focus becomes brighter as I focus and calmness goes up as I become calmer. So um, yeah, it's basically the, a question of taking a bunch of mathematics and figuring out what you can do in order to create some gameplay. So in this case, you can think of out of the box without having to train anything, I can get Focus on calm. So what would happen if I become focused but not calm, 
right? Uh, does that help with some sort of magic or power in the game? What happens if I'm calm but not focused? What happens if I just don't pay attention to anything I'm doing, but I'm just becoming very calm and chill? Will that help something? So it is up to you as a game designer now to take these values and use them to your advantage. Also, do remember that it is good to credit the authors. So always put the credits where credits are due. And uh, remember, you're standing on the shoulders of giants. In this case, I am using Unreal Engine's free assets. Even the music is given as an example asset. So basically, you can use this on your own for testing purposes or use your own art. One thing I wanted to go over with you guys is the folder structure. Now, yes, you still need to have your JavaScript in the scripts folder, even if you cannot directly access it here, you have to do it in the Explorer as the last time. In a folder called NeuroGame, I put anything that's specific to this example project. Everything else is provided by Unreal Engine and Epic Games. The title menu widget, for instance, is the one responsible for um, logging you in, auto-logging in, so doing some sanity checks, for instance. Um, you can see that I have commented it a lot so that you understand what I'm doing step by step. Some of these things are super important. For instance, the Neurosity interface beforehand, it was called the app. Now it is the interface because it is what is interfacing between the engine and the crown and, you know, the interfacer. Now, uh, I have put in red something very, very important, which is how to terminate the script before going into the next level because uh, the Node.js plugin doesn't do that automatically. So as you can see, I added a new line in the script to just process exit, just terminate the script because otherwise uh, the blueprint will be destroyed upon entering a new level, but the script will not stop. So you will be instancing a new blueprint that's listening to a script that never stopped, so it doesn't quite bound. Uh, you need the script to restart to bind the listeners to the emitters. Uh, so yeah, there you go. The way I do this is, Let's say, for instance, that I want to go to the example level from this title menu. So there's a button start to start the game. So the first thing I do is I get my Neurosity interface and I call on exit called function so that the script is stopped. Then I open the level. As soon as I start the first level, I bring up a loading screen, wait please, while everything is going on. Then I will be fishing the NeuroGame instance and the save game instance in order to be able to then auto log in. What's happening here is I am instantiating a new um, NeuroGame instance in order to uh, listen to the script. So since Node.js knows that the script is stopped, it will restart it and bound any listeners to the emitters in this new NeuroGame instance. And then I tell it to wait and wait and wait until the script is begun. If the script has not begun, I do not do anything else. Then we work with whatever else. Now, this is a bit, a bit of an innovation. I had to delay stuff until the device is selected, until we are logged in, until the, um, the script is running. Um, otherwise, the game will crash because it's calling on null things. So, yeah. And that is it for this month's update. I hope you download it, play around with it, and uh, tell me how it's going. Uh, you will have to excuse our dust, but I just wanted to just bring this out to the public as fast as possible so that people can start experimenting. If you come up with a Neurosity SDK by yourself, I will be very glad to check it out and see if I can make my code better with your SDK. I hope you enjoyed this little experiment of mine. Um, give me a comment or send me a message and I hope to see you around. Bye-bye.